Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello. Hi. Well, today, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God, um, today is the actual third and final installment, I could say, of a vid series of videos that branched off of a morsel that a brother had given unto me. Um, this video also is going to be uh, is a collaborated effort. Uh, a few brethren actually helped um, to reach uh, what we are going to be looking at today. We are going to be looking at Psalm 49. We're going to be doing some expository um, study here. In Psalm 49, not the not every single verse in Psalm 49 is going to be heavily exposited upon, but we are going to look deeply into some of this. But um, so so you know uh, also too uh, today I'm going to be using two sets of scriptures. Uh, this is easier for me, <laughs> okay? Instead of having something up on uh, the computer screen or whatnot, this is easier for me, okay? But um, the last, with this video included, these, la these three videos, the Proverbs 7 video and the video that was pre uh, previous to this one, have, and I mentioned this in the previous video, this is, has come about from something a brother shared with me that the Lord gave him and he shared with me that branched off into several different directions but yet, coming back to that same source, who is in control? Who is in control is basically, you know, with times right now as it is, are we truly trusting the Lord? Are we truly trusting the Lord? Yes, we are, but... Get your butt out. Yes, we are. But, like I said, get your butt out. So, like I said, this is the final video in this. Um, so let's, with no more further ado, let's get into this. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 49. And again, I'm going to address you as though you are following along in the scriptures, okay? Okay. Psalm 49. Let's begin. Verse 1. Hear this. All you, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, addressing everybody both low and high, rich and poor, together. Turn in your authorized version now to Proverbs 13. What is it? Men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. Something like that. I might have just got that backwards. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 8, if my fingers can work with me. Okay, Proverbs 13, verses 1 on to verse 8. Both low and high, rich and poor, together. Note how low and high, then it says rich and poor. The low, rich, and the high, poor? Hmm. Proverbs 13, verses 1 on verse 8. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. <laughs> Sorry. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, 
But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruct shall have destruction. Sometimes some of y'all need to keep your mouth shut. Hi. The soul of the slugger desireth and have and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. Right here. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. The ransom of a man's life are his riches. Where are your riches? Are they in heaven or are they on earth? The ransom of your life. What does that say there? The ransom of a man's life are his riches. How precious is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, unto you. And the blood that he shed on that cross. Hmm? Or is your worldly existence today, right now, more precious than thus? Now, see, you know what you're supposed to say. You know, right? Well, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you living by that by, in practice? Or is it something that just comes out verbally? What is it? Men of low degree are a uh, vanity and men of high degree are a lie? Altogether? Vanity? Hmm? And also on that, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 10. Psalm 49, verse 2 again. Both low and high, rich and poor, together. None are exempt. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 10. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to offend because you are going to live according to the scriptures and prophesy, speak the word through the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is that spirit? The Lord is that spirit, okay? You speak the truth of God's word through the word, the Lord living in you, you're prophesying today in this dispensation, okay? You speak this, the world's going to hate you, you're going to offend people, okay? When he talks about giving no offense in anything, uh... Don't go out of your way to be a jerk. Don't condescend to be as the world. Don't fight fire with fire. Live according to the scriptures. <laughs> and the offending will come by itself when you live to the standard, see. Okay? Brethren, again, you make this your rule of faith and practice. Practice. You know, do what it say, right? That, that's going to offend people. So that offend, giving no offense in anything, is clearly not talking about living according to the scriptures. No. It's talking about um, keeping your mouth from Remember what we just looked at in, Saul, in Proverbs 13, huh? Yeah? Whoso keepeth his mouth, you get what I'm saying, right? Let's continue. 
But in all things approving your ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. Ooh, yeah, patience. In afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tolments, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. Don't they call those of us of the Church of the Living God deceivers, right? Right. Right. As unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always, always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich. Get, get out of your head this money. Get that out of your head for, for what we're looking at right now. For right now. Get that out of your head. Because see, that's what the care Catholic, uh, Pentecatholic, uh, uh, name it and claim it, idiots. <laughs> I'm showing charity there. That, that's what they, they base this, you know. Get that out of your head. As poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. All things are yours. And all things of our, is, our, is of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Go to James. Go to James. James is written unto who? James chapter 1. James, a servant of, uh, verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. This is written unto the twelve tribes of who? Israel. Okay. This is a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay. This is going to be very pertinent during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. There are a lot of instruction and righteousness for us today in the book of James. And yes, some cross dispensational lines, but Hebrew and James are the two big epistles for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? So, James chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. All flesh is as grass. Verse 2 in Psalm 49, both low and high, rich and poor together. Hear this, all ye people. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. This is written for the time of Jacob's trouble. Keep that in mind. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eaten. A lot of people are talking about getting gold and silver, gold and silver. When, when... Our American dollar collapses and becomes good for uh, toilet paper. What are you going to do? You're going to go to Jewel Osco with uh, gold bullion and it's like, here, give me food. How are they going to exchange it when the Jesuit order is manipulating the price of gold and whatnot and silver? Look at this. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Now, gold and silver does not rust. No, but what is it saying here? What is our Lord saying? 
It's going to be cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you because they're not going to be of any use during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're not going to be of any use when that man of sin, the son of perdition, has been allowed to have reign on the earth fulfilling God's judgment. See, okay? Gold and silver is ultimately not going to be your best bet. What is? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I know many out there who are Christians. And what happens when your Swiss bank accounts with all your money and all your stuff collapses on you? <sighs> Blessed are the poor. There's nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money. Remember that. We'll, we'll touch on that. We'll touch on that, okay? Now, let's read, uh, let's read a little bit more here in Psalm 49. Verse 3. My mouth shall speak of wisdom. Wisdom. Job 28, 28. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to, and to depart from evil is understanding. Okay, the video, um, the expository video of Proverbs 1 verses 1 through 7, I'm going to link that one in this video where we get into, you know, into it deeply, touches on this. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding, departing from evil. Okay, so here, all world, both low and high, rich and poor, together, everybody, listen. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Verse 4. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Now, like I said, I'm going to link that whole video of the Proverbs uh, video in this, but we're going to read that again, okay? I'm not going to exposit on it or anything like that because the other video does that, but we are going to read Proverbs 1, verses 1 on to verse 7 again, okay? Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7, and you know, I'll link the expository video on this, okay? The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear. A wise man is who? One who fears the Lord. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. That was verse 4 in uh, Psalm 49, okay? A wise man will hear, verse 5 in uh, Proverbs 1, and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And also, to hold your place there, uh, of course, Psalm 78 Psalm 78, verses 1 under verse 3. And again, this is already covered in detail in the Proverbs 1, 1 through 7 expository video, which I will link. So, give ear, O my people. Psalm 78, 1 under verse 3. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Dark sayings, okay? I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. Okay, remember, Elisha called for a minstrel, okay? And the minstrel played for him, and then he spake a prophecy 
uh, by the uh, by the word of the Lord. Okay, Elisha did that. But the dark sayings, dark sayings are such that are the truth of God's word that are able to be known by those who are saved, born again, converted, has the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within us. Those who have eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, those who are saved can, um, can hear these sayings because they are not dark. But those who are lost, who are in darkness, they can't get these sayings. See, see, we who are saved, born again, converted, we are in the light. And that light, capital L, is our Lord Jesus Christ. And capital L, light, as far as I know, appears four times in the scriptures in John chapter 1. Okay? We are in the light. He is in us. We need to abide in him. Okay? But those who are not, who say they are, but they are not, they're in darkness. So when we speak truth, of the scriptures, hence dark sayings. Get it? Okay? Okay, now let's continue. Verse 5 in Psalm 49. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? When the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about. Go to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wants are many. Needs are few. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, you all know this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. God can furnish a table in the wilderness. Wants are many. Needs are few. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And house of the Lord's house. You belong unto him. You say, born again, converted. He's right here living in you, sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Wants are many, needs are few. Look, my American countrymen, Our nation is going to collapse. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. <laughs> These things now, right? <laughs> you can take this off, right? Jobs are opening up again. But remember, all this stimuli money that they gave out. Time to pay up will be coming soon. Our country is done for, people. Are you of the Church of the Living God? 
What are you going to trust in? Wants are many, needs are few. You know to say, I know that the Lord will provide for my needs. But what do you do? You put a but in there. When the rubber hits the road, you're going to get out of that boat? Or are you going to see the wind boisterous? My wife and I are living proof that the Lord will provide for your need. Not your greed. Wants are many, needs are few. You do it according to his way, he'll reward you. And with what's coming, brethren, <laughs> how many of us are really, truly having that faith? We say we do, right? But do we? You muse on that one for a little while yourself, okay? Now, go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Wherefore, verse 5 in Psalm 49, Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall come past me about? Psalm 37, <laughs> verses 21 on to verse 4. I forgot to put the zero in there on my notes. <laughs> Verse 21 on to the close of the chapter. Psalm 37. The wicked borroweth. I'll begin at verse 21 on to the close of the chapter. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. How's your, how's your walk according to the scriptures going, brother, sister? How's it going for me? Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. You, you know that, but does it go down here? Hmm? I have been young, and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hmm? You know it says you know what it says. But do you truly believe it? He is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. Okay? Now, with what we'd already looked at, here's a little clue. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. Ooh, okay, so if you are the church of the living God and living in continual sin, yes, he is ever merciful and lendeth, okay, and his seed is blessed, he is not, uh, nor his seed begging bread, right? But if you're going to live as the world, being as of the church of the living God, You're in a lot of danger. And plus two, you've got to remember the testimony that we are going to be leaving behind for those who get left behind. You've you, you got to put that into the equation. You've got to remember that. This walk is not just about yourself. Wow, man, what a concept, right? <laughs> Yeah. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment. Oh, he loveth judgment. We are to judge, you mean? The Lord judges? Yes. 
But we are to judge? Oh, no, you're not to judge. Oh, you're not to judge hypocritically. But we are to judge. How? According to the scripture. See, we have a standard, and we judge what we see, what we hear, according to the standard. And if that doesn't line up with this, by the by, right? We know that. Do we do it? Huh? Hi. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh <gasps> wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Verse 30, and go back to Psalm 49, verse 3. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. Look at verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, fear of the Lord, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Judge yourselves. Prove your own selves. Every single day. It's painful. It hurts. But yes, judge yourselves. And his tongue talketh of judgment. Verse 3 in Psalm 49. And the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding departing from evil. Ooh. <laughs> the law of his God in his, is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. And what this is going on right now. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Oh yeah, they are. See, the eye of Lord, the eyes of the Lord are upon everything, but these devils are also watching you. You're being watched. <laughs> yeah, especially when you see um, uh, SUVs with the little, two little round things on the back of the United States of America, the eagle thing, you know, the, the seal of America or whatever. One here, one here on the backside, and then when I walk by, hanging in the mirror, there's a rosary. <laughs> it's close to home. Yeah, yeah, it's close to home. <clears throat> the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord. And... Keep his way to instruct us today. What does that mean? And keep his way. Walk according to the scriptures. And don't try to do things in your own power. But wait on the Lord. You know, remember he told the children of Israel, there's the promised land. Go get it. I'm with you. Go get it. Okay? Go, go. I'll give it to you. Just go, go, go get it. Okay? He'll call you out of the boat. But you do have to put some legs into those things sometimes. You just can't sit there. Okay? Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power. <laughs> and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Oh, yeah. The Jesuits and uh, Roman Catholicism, yeah, they're spread all over. Even right down the street. <laughs> yeah. And it's spreading. Interesting, huh? 
Yet, he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Shalom. Salem. Peace. Perfect. Not sinlessly perfect. Perfect here. Because it came to the Lord broken. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to quit about speaking about brokenness. If you do not have brokenness and come to the Lord Jesus Christ without it, You ain't saved. As simple as it can be. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Now, of course, the fulfillment of this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. But for our instruction for today, towards the end of this dispensation, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. You know, brethren, it's going to get to the point where we're really going to have to consider whether or not we truly do trust in the Lord. You say you do. But when everything goes, when everything gets lost, when you lose everything, thinking up things that you can do, is it of the Lord? But Note this, note this in verse 5. When the iniquity of my heels compasseth me about. When the iniquity of my heels compasseth me about. Go to Genesis. Go to Genesis. Here's another admonition. Genesis, guess what chapter? Yeah, 3. Genesis chapter 3. Brother, I, I myself too, I, uh, I, I, I've read Genesis chapter 3 quite a few times. Um, when I read scripture, I try and I, I look at it as if I've never read it before. And that helps because the Lord just, you know, but amen, amen. Sorry for that rabbit trail. Genesis chapter 3 verses 14 and 15. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast, hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And what, and what is uh, verse 19? Uh, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Satan is devouring Dirt, man, men. Interesting. He's being allowed to do that. But address that in another video. See, these three tie together like this. But now, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, Israel, and between thy seed and her seed, the Jew, our Lord Jesus Christ, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? Go to Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 on to verse 7. 
And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. Okay? Read Romans chapter 7 sometimes, brethren, okay? And thou shalt rule over him. When sin, uh, sin is conceived and brought forth, it brings forth what? Death. And when you give yourself over, when you give yourself over to sin, and thou shalt rule over him. Sin. When you give yourself over onto it, are you not ruling over it? Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about, where places he had been, Again, devils like to try to take you back into the past and keep you there and keep you from moving forward. Hmm? Really good, strong admonition to um, adhere, again, to the scriptures and to abstain from all appearance of evil. I thought that was very interesting. What about you? Now, Let's continue in Psalm 49, verse 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. <laughs> they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Note the tie-in between that and verse 5, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Okay? Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 73 and Psalm 49 are very similar. They, uh, they speak on pretty much the same premise. Okay? Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verses 1 under verse 15. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. And if someone is doing something foolishly, they are behaving as if there is no God. Behaving as if they're not going to one day give an account for what they have done. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Yeah. Money answereth all things. Yeah. 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 When uh, Solomon says that in Ecclesiastes, by the way, it's almost said in somewhat kind of a jest. Almost. Almost. But the comparison is, you need to be rich toward the Lord. Because guess what, cousin? This stuff ain't going to last. Let's continue, let's continue. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Because these people who prosper... They don't have to worry about if they're going to pay their electric or gas or water bill today. Hmm? They don't have to worry about the things that those who are poor but yet had 
great riches, meaning they don't know how they're going to put food on their table. Unto those who are well off, who prosper in wickedness. Yeah. They're not plagued like other men. Verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Wickedly concerning oppression. They're not oppressed so they can see the way of the oppressor as being a good thing. Because why? They're not in trouble like other men. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. <laughs> walketh through the earth, speaketh of earthly things. Therefore his people return hither. The waters of a full cup are run out to them, and they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. If you're rich in this world, okay, especially with the coming collapse of the economy, what's all your, what's all your wealth going to do you? Hmm? What happens when all your millions disappear in your bank account? That you boast about. Hmm? What are you going to do? Where is your treasure at? Where is your treasure at? Is it down here? Well, no, it's not. Yeah. Are you living like it? Are you living like it? Are you self-dependent? Or Christ-dependent? As for me and my house, we shall serve, we will serve the Lord. We are Christ-dependent. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What about you? Or has he given to you and that has bred into you Self-dependence. You got to do something. Hmm. Behold, these are, are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in, 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 in innocency. Excuse me. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Hmm. We're scraping to get by, but yet all these rich people, especially still today, are still doing very well. Yeah. See, for those of us of the Church of the Living God, we've got to be careful about that because that could lead to what? Envy. And be not the sinner or any of his ways. Give you, give us food convenient for me. Give me neither riches nor poverty. <laughs> riches, you can become self-dependent. Poverty, you could steal and take the name of your Lord in vain. Give me what I need. Wants are many. Needs are few. Okay. Now, go to Luke chapter 4. <laughs> yeah, brother. Like I said, this all ties in. These past three videos. Okay? Here's, here's the baits. Luke 4, familiar verses. 5 and 7. The devil taketh him, taking him up into a high mountain, 
shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. How many have fallen for that trap? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. I know Christians who boast themselves of their riches. I'm a millionaire. Yeah? Good for you. What is that gonna what is that gonna profit you in the last day? Hmm? Where is your true riches? Have you caught have you taken the bait? To get a little ease here, remember Lazarus and the rich guy? He suffered many things, but in the end, he was comforted in Abraham's bosom. Okay? But the rich man was in hell. How many have taken, how many are taking the bait of the world right now? Of Satan. How many are clinging to worldly riches rather than on our Lord Jesus Christ? Because riches make themselves wings, they fly away. And when um, the American economy collapsed, I can't speak of for other nations. I'm in America. Make your pardon. When it collapses, what are you going to do? And let us remember 1 Timothy chapter 6. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot love money and even claim to love the Lord Jesus Christ. God gave Solomon a whole bunch of riches. Yes, he did. But look what happened to Solomon towards the end of his life. Many strange women caused him to sin. Okay? He went out from his kindred, okay? And you look, you look that up, okay? What is that? That's uh, um, second, uh, first, first Kings chapter 11, okay? He loved many strange women, not of Israel, okay? And those strange women caused his heart to go away from the Lord. And he built Astaroth and all these things, uh, these pagan things, Okay? He didn't stick within his kindred like he was commanded to. Okay. All those riches that Solomon had. What did he say of them? Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. Because and, and while we're on this little wabbit trail, let us remember some... <laughs> This is Old Testament, yes, but you tell me. Um, Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 on to verse 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. 
For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And that was Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and verse 14. Fear God. Don't fear the world. Don't love the things of this world. Where's your love? And what is your love in? Verse 7 now. We are going to read now verses 7 on to verse 9. Okay, check this out. Verse 6 again. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Verse 7. None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever that he should not, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, his body was in the tomb for three days. Okay? And remember when he went to see Lazarus, who was sick and died, and he goes, you know, they roll the, they open up the tomb, and it's like, Lazarus, come forth! Okay? Remember that? Lazarus was dead for four days, and he began to stink, meaning four days is when the body starts to, what? See corruption, not in three. There's a little science for you, atheist. Yeah. Yeah, four days. He's been in the tomb for four days. Now, by now, he stinketh. Three days? Hmm. He didn't see corruption. Yeah, roll that around in your head a little bit. Okay, but there again. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious. It ceaseth forever, and it ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Okay? 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, no, second, yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 8 on to verse 11. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. So what? That means you got to come up with many schemes on how to get by? No. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but God, but in God which raiseth the dead. Whom delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, pray for one another, that for the gift bestowed upon us by means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. And now, uh, and now go to 1 Pete. 1 Pete chapter 1. 1 Pete chapter 1. Of course, you knew we had to come here. You knew that. 1 Pete, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. None of them can by any means redeem his, his brother. You're not going to be able to redeem yourself with anything of the world, by anything that you do. Okay? You can't. Why? For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 on to the close of the chapter. You seeing that, right? Yeah. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, 
silver and gold corruptible? Oh, you mean that uh, maybe rust? <laughs> your garments are moth-eaten? Hmm? Your silver and gold is, can is cankered and the rust of them is a testimony against you? Really? For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. No sin. No sin. God can't sin. Precious blood of Christ. Because blood is, by the shedding of blood, is made the atonement of the soul. And the blood of God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who never sinned, is the only thing that can, is the only thing that can wash away your sins. The blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. That he shed on that cross. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. I have several videos talking about that, about how that was from the beginning in Genesis chapter 3, that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, that's the Calvinism video, I think it is. Can't remember right offhand, but let's continue. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Not you. Not in your belief. Not in your calling without a broken heart. But in God. Is your hope, faith, and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Or is it up here? Is it out there? Is it right here? Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, faileth, uh, falleth away. excuse me, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And of course, go to 2 Peter now. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 19. For the redemption of their soul is precious and ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 19. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Why is that? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. See, we are to be totally dependent on God. But see, when the cares of this world choke the word, okay, and you start thinking outside of your own devices by what you're going to do, but these is uh, verses 12 on verse 19. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. 
and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, uh, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Covetousness is in their heart. So does that mean that these people had a broken heart to begin with to come to be saved? Or did they merely say that they were and truly are not? See, if you're trusting on anything but the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What else? What else? Oh, you're trusting on your belief? Hmm? You're trusting on, I, I, I called on the name. I called on the name of the Lord 27 times, right? Sorry. What are you trusting on? Him? Or your belief? Or your call? No. What are you trusting on? What? Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Elam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with man's voice for bad the madness of the prophet, seeking the ways of the world. And a dumb, the dumb ass, a donkey that could not speak, spake <laughs> with man's voice. Female donkeys spake with a man's voice. Go figure that one out. Forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, Clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give a ransom, nor give to God a ransom for him. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same, of the same is he brought in bondage. What are you trusting in? You say you are trusting on the Lord. But are you? <laughs> One day, coming very soon, I believe, so do many others, everything is going to collapse around us. The Lord might put you into a position where you will have no choice but to trust solely on him. Both my wife and I were put into that situation, and here we are today. You, you, you walk according to the scripture, not your feelings, but you walk according to the scripture. He will provide for your need, because remember, remember, hi, 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 I need to remember too. Wants are many, needs are few. You got, you got the point on these three verses? Hmm? Okay. Verse 10. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Wise men. 
those who fear the Lord. For he seeth that wise men die. Likewise the fool, who says in his heart there is no God, and the brutish person, and leave their wealth to others. Hmm. Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Oops, oops, I was right there. Psalm 39, verses 4 and verse 7. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. That your trust be in God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, not in yourself. Do you secretly trust in yourself? You say, I, I trust on the Lord, but watch what I can do. Brother, sister, you got to get away from that. <laughs> I can't do anything, Lord, unless thou, O oh Lord, provide me a way to do it. Show me. And I was like, okay, there it is. Okay, help me to put forth. Thank you, Lord. Self-dependence over Christ-dependence. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. Surely every man walketh in a vain sure, shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in the stock market. My hope is that the economy will uh, uh, revive because of all the stimuli stuff they've been doing. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. In thee. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 19. <laughs> And I turn myself to behold wisdom, fear of the Lord, and madness, insanity, and folly, sin. For what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which hath been already done? Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. And what event happens to every single one of us? The common denominator? We're going to die. I'm going to die. You're going to die. We're all going to die. There is no escape in that war. There, excuse me, there is no discharge from that war. What will you do in the end thereof? The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Then said I in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool, who says in his heart there is no God, so it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. 
For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as the fool? Therefore I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Uh, yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored and wherein I have shewed myself Wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. For, okay. Uh, where, where are we? Where are we? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Verse 1 on verse 3. Check this out. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man not, knoweth either love or hatred, by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth, and to him that sacrificeth, sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. Verse 1. And two, in Psalm 49 again, Hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor, together. And verse 10, For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool, and the brutish per person perisheth, eh, and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Verse 3, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, all things come alike to all. Oh, reading verse 2 again, sorry. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, and to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. There is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. All those things, all those riches, you'll leave to someone else. And who knows what they're going to do with them, right? The Jesuits, um, one of their tactics is to go to widows. So when they die, they will bequeath their uh, belongings onto the Jesuits. And they do that by lots of manipulation tactics and whatnot. Um, lots of people will do that. Jack Hiles, when he died, he didn't leave a cent to his family. Um, not one cent, apparently, but he gave it all to the church building. And in fact... Giving all that he had of the world back onto the world, the church building system. Mystery Babylon! Yeah. 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 And also, too, go to Jude. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude does not have chapters. Because notice here it says about. The brutish person perish. Jude. Jude 10 on the verse 19. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves, unregenerate, not saved, of the world. <clears throat> Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, 
and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom, it res to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And in the book of Enoch also, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> caught you, didn't I? And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words heavy men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Flattery. Flattery immediately comes to mind. What about with you? But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, being led by their senses, having not the spirit. Led by their senses, you know, their emotions and stuff like that, having not the spirit. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool, and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Verse 11 in Psalm 49. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. And, uh, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands by their own names. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Come on, fingers. Psalm 10, verses 1 and verse 11. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Their foot will slide in due time. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 32. You go find it. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. None of them can by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for him. Verse 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Hmm. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. What did we look at in the, about the poor already? Blessed are the poor. Yeah. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. Hmm, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeing whom he may devour? Hmm. 
He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. His net. All shall be thine if thou fall down and worship me. Compromise a little. Then you can go ahead and go into the grocery store again. Hey, you can get a job, right? If you compromise. Oh, beg your pardon. He croucheth, he humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And that they might fall by his what? His strong ones? That the poor may fall by his strong ones? Hmm. And Satan's ministers are disguised as what? Ministers of righteousness? To make you fall? Because you're trusting in yourself, not in the Lord. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. Hmm. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Yeah. Yeah. And now go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. <laughs> Luke chapter 12, verses 16 on to verse 21. Actually, let's read verses 13 on to verse 21. In Luke chapter 12. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Now, you say, I know that. We know that. Do we live it? Do we live it? Doesn't mean be flippant. It doesn't mean being careless with what the Lord gives, okay? We, we, we're really tight on that. You know, anything the Lord gives is like, okay, X, Y, Z. This is for this, this, this. Anything left though? Lark, it, it, is there something, you know? Very tight on that. Okay? But you got to remember. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where I bestow my fruits. Think of the pride about that. <laughs> look, at, look at all I've got. Look at all this. <laughs> I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. Yeah, look at this. I'm rich and wealthy. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord, he's made me wealthy. Yeah, and you're blaspheming him. It, the scriptures say not many noble, not many wealthy. I think that's what that says. But it says not many. Why? It's very difficult for those who are rich in this world to humble themselves and to be totally dependent upon the Lord. See, People who got a lot of this world's goods, you got it harder than us poor folk. Because see, we're depend our lifeline is the Lord Jesus Christ. You have other things that spread like a green bay tree. I know of supposedly wealthy Christians. Yeah, they're not plagued like other men. But you know what? They got it more rough than you and I as Pope folk. Mark my word. Let's continue. 
And he said, verse 18, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Ah, ah. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Ah, yeah, look at all this. Look at all this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, everyone out there is going to hell in a handbasket. Okay. Yeah, but I got all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But God said unto him, Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Oh, you're going to leave it to your church building, aren't you? Hmm? Going to leave it to your favorite Catholic charity? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. <laughs> huh. Continuing in Psalm 49, verse 12. Now, we're going to skip a little here. Because verse 12, we're going to expound on with conjunction of verse 20 at the end of this. Okay, so. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. Remember, abideth. We'll get on to that. We'll get to that a little later. He is like the beasts that perish. This their way is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their sayings. Shilah. And of course, yet their posterity approve their sayings. Shilah. You can reference, of course, Luke 12, what we just looked at. Okay, kind of deals with that. But also verse 18 here in Psalm 49. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. In conjunction with verse 11, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They shall call their lands after their own names. Going back to verse 13, this their way is their folly. Yet their posterity approved their saying Selah. Verse 12, uh, oh, Luke, <laughs> Luke chapter 12. Verse 19, and I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Amen. Okay. Verse 14. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. So is he, verse 21 in Luke 12, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Abideth. We'll get to that in a little, in a little bit here. Okay. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. And the upright, who are upright, Those who seek to cleanse their way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Those who are of the church of the living God. Those who are saved. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume away, shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. Talking about those who what? 
So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is, and is not rich toward God? Verse 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Selah. Oh, oh, First Corinthians, huh? First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 15. You know where we're going. You know where we're going. First Corinthians 15, verse 51 on to verse 58. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Selah. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 out of verse 58. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass, pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? See, say, being saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Death isn't going to be a sting to you because you know that you're not going to die, but you're going to be with forever with the Lord. O grave, where is thy victory? That's in the ground. That's not where you're going to stay. <laughs> Those of you who are lost, guess what? Yeah, death is sting to you because you know you're not saved, born again, converted. Guess where you're going to go? You're going to go to hell. And the grave will have victory over you. That's why you need to be saved. By our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Come to him on his terms. It's a little bit easier than you think. You just got to get over yourself. This is talking about the redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is is the law. What does that mean? Uh, all sin will lead to death. And you don't know what sin is unless it is by the law. Okay? He covers that in Romans chapter 7. You need to read Romans chapter 7 every once in a while. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Come here. Come, you, come here. Come here. Okay? Look at that. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay? For as much, don't look at me, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord's called you on to do something, and you're doing it. You might not see any results right, right here with your own eyes, but you don't know. You don't know how God used you as a witness at that gas station. You don't know how God is using what you do on a website. Uh-huh, with the stuff you post. You don't know. You don't know 
what the Lord's going to do with someone who finds that trap in that box of cereal or under that coffee can thing. You don't know. You will. You will, but you don't know. You don't know. But what you ought to know, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And it's not talking about to save yourself. Come on. No. Rewards. The Lord calls you to something. Whatever it is, your labor is not in vain. Don't you forget that. And let that be enough for you. Okay? I have always said, even you mine enemies, even those of you who are my enemies, who would kill me, bludgeon me, and run me over, okay? Even you would have to admit that from the beginning, it's so long as one person May here be rebuked, encouraged, edified. One person. Then everything has been worth it. If one person has been encouraged, edified, strengthened in anything that the Lord has used this worthless sinner for. If just one person. That is enough. That is your hundredfold. And if there's more than that, then praise the Lord. Don't let it get to your head. And coming from some, I, I struggle with my pride. Okay? You got to watch that. Got to watch that, brethren. Your labor is not in vain. Don't forget that. Okay? Okay? Stalk, and you know what? We were, we were going to go to first, uh, th uh, let's go there anyway. Let's go there anyway, okay? First Thessalonians chapter 4, of course. First Thessalonians chapter 4, what is that? Verses 13 on to verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 5, one verse, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The salvation that is being talked about is the redemption of the purchased possession. To be caught up. I saw that devil Phil Robinson talk about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And he's a water dog, a Campbellite. And he thinks that he's going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. If he makes it, if he survives the initial, you know, um, release of the son of perdition, yeah, he will be. Listen to that quick video. It was absurd. It was like he was openly deceiving because this is clearly talking about the catching away. Okay. But anyway, that's sorry about that. And of course, Romans chapter seven. Read Romans chapter seven, brother, sister. Take your time and read it. Okay, once a month. Read it once a month. It'll do you good. Let us not forget this. Romans chapter 7, verses 24 to verse 25. 
If I die before my wife or my best friend, my beloved brother, our brother, at my burial, Romans chapter 7 is to be read at my burial in its entirety. And my friend will be the one doing it if I go before he does. O wretched man that I am, verses 24 and 25. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the, the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. What was that? Verse 14. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. Because to those who are not, the grave will have victory over them. And death will sting. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Selah. Verse 16. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. Psalm 73. See how we do that? Psalm 73. Come on. Yeah, you see that? Psalm 73. Verse 16 on to verse 28. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until... I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. My foot shall slide in due time. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors, and so are all of those who are not rich toward God. Whose riches are down here and are not rich toward our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, ooh, let's continue. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Like when everything collapses and you're not rich toward the Lord and you're calling yourself a Christian, but you're only taking that on you because you're doing well. What happens in the storm? Oh, we're going to look at a really good example of that. Let's continue. As a dream, when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I. Believing there was no God when he saw the prosperity of the wicked. Lord, how can these people who are doing all this evil, how can they be so set up? The sanctuary of God. Prayer. The scripture. Okay? God lives within you. Yeah, it's really easy, isn't it? How can these devils be doing so good. Look at them. Their pockets are lined. Right? Even today, they got the best stuff. They got everything. You can't pay your bills. So foolish was I. Behaving as if there is no God. So foolish was I and ignorant. Ignorant. Not knowing better. 
I was as a beast before thee. Look at that verse. Foolish beast. Unnatural. The spirit of the beast that goeth downward. Okay? Beasts don't have souls. They have a spirit. They have a body. They don't have a soul. Get over that. Okay? But foolish, foolish said in his heart there is no God, living foolishly as if there is no God, behaving that way. Beast, unnatural, unregenerate, uh, natural, unregenerate, beast. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. You know, what's that? Um, count your blessings, everyone, and at the end of the day, you'll be surprised at what the Lord hath done, something like that. Wants are many, needs are few. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterward, receive me to glory. <laughs> Whom have I in heaven but thee? <laughs> and there is none upon earth that I decide, desire but thee. Ooh. The contrast in Psalm 73 about the guys who on earth desire riches and other things. And there is none upon earth that I desire but thee. Beg your pardon. My flesh and my heart faileth. Yeah, because our flesh and our heart is going to see corruption. But God is the strength of my heart. And my portion forever. My reward is with me. Okay, when he comes back. Behold, I cometh quickly, and my reward is with me. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord, that I may declare all thy works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, verse 17. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Be not, a, verse 16. Oh, it's Psalm four, uh, 49, sorry. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, Verse 17, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Go to Job. Go to Job. You know, when, and this happens, when you're struggling with worldliness and stuff like that about the things of the world and having everything, let's remember something about good old Job. Okay? Job. Job chapter 1. Now, you can read this on your own time. Satan had to come before the Lord. And um, the Lord gave a glowing testimony of Job, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And then Satan says to the Lord, uh, Yeah, does, doth Job fear God for naught? Haven't you put a hedge about him and protected everything? But take away all that he has all his stuff, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord says, go ahead, but don't touch him. Take away his stuff, but don't touch him. And Satan goes, uh, goes and does that, and then one, two, three, four, in succession, just boom, 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 boom. Okay? Just like that, he loses his children, his livelihood, his house, everything, that kind of stuff. Okay? He loses all of his worldly stuff. Everything. 
Satan said to the Lord, you take that all away, he'll curse you to your face. How many of you Christians go to your church building? How many of you, if you lose everything, are you going to curse God to his face? Or can we learn something from Job? Verses 20 on to verse 22. After all of this, all that happened to Job. And he, was, he had a glowing testimony from the Lord. Then Job arose, rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. Job, by the Lord's own testimony, was one who feared God and eschewed evil. <laughs> How are we lining up with that, right? But nonetheless, Job lost everything. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If I lose everything, can I do that? If you lose everything, can you do that? That might come a lot sooner than many of us want to believe. How, how ready are we for this? And while we're in Job here, check this out. Job chapter 2. So Satan goes and does this, right? Right? Okay? And um, Job doesn't, you know, didn't charge God foolishly. And the Lord says to Satan in chapter 2, it's like, hey, you see? You moved me to um, afflict him without a cause. And then Satan says, Skin for skin, yet all that a man hath will he give for his life. But touch his bone and his flesh, and he'll curse you, curse thee to thy face. See, these people who boast themselves of their riches. I'm Christian, and you're a millionaire Christian. Yeah, right. Um, is that possible? Okay, yeah, that is. But <laughs> nine times out of ten. Take away everything. Oh, I'm still alive. Touch his bone in his flesh. And he'll curse thee to his, your face. Where does he say that? Verse 5 in Job chapter 2. Let's read verse 5 on verse 10. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. Remember that. And he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. But save his life. Don't kill him. Flick him his body. You took all of his livelihood. Everything. In all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Chapter 1. Chapter 2. Okay. Touch his bone and his flesh. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smoked Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot onto, the, onto his crown. And he took a potsherd to scrape himself with all and sat down among the ashes. In marriage, she is bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. They too shall be one flesh, right? Touch his bones and his flesh. Verse 9, then said his wife unto him. 
Thus thou still retain thine integrity, curse God, and die. Um, who did Satan go after in the Garden of Eden? La hey, hey, ladies, ladies, sisters, chill. Okay? Chill. But d d deal with this. Okay? Sisters, you know this. You women out there who may be watching, you lost. But put forth, verse 5, thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. His bone and his flesh. Yes, his actual bone and his flesh. But um, she shall be bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. They too shall be one flesh, husband and wife. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Job's own wife turned on. Talk about getting personal. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? He kills, he wounds, he makes alive. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. You know, brethren, a good way to gauge yourself, to judge yourself when things are going wrong, apparently, first, you need to find out if you're in sin, okay? If you're in sin, you know it, and you're playing around, you better quit. You better stop it. And two, when things are happening just because they are happening, so you can be a testimony unto the Lord, you come back to Job 1 and 2. Here's a man who lost everything and his own wife turned against him. He touched his bone and his flesh. He scraped himself with all, yes. But even his own wife. Family. See what I'm saying? <laughs> and of course... 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. See how we did that? 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 17. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 under verse 8. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, Strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Look at, the, look at the scriptures. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food, I have esteemed thy word more than my necessary food. And raiment, clothing, to be clothed with humility. Put on, put on. The Lord Jesus Christ. Let us therewith be content, having something to eat and clothing. Let us be therewith content. Wants are many. 
needs a few. Verse 18, which we already looked at in comparison to verse 12. Okay, and again, you can reference that with uh, Luke 12, verse 19 and stuff like that. But verse 18, though while he lived, he blessed his soul and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. The generation of his fathers are the ones who did not believe, who are saved, born again, converted. You know, they will not see light. Now, verse 20. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. Look at verse 12. Nevertheless, the man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. Verse 20. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. Abideth and understandeth. Abideth. John 15. John 15. Man that is in honor, that which is highly esteemed above men, of men is an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe if ye seek honor one from another and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God? Only. John 15. John 15. Verses 1 and verse 14. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Today, this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, you are saved, born again, converted. You came to him broken and contrite. You believe on him for what he did because of what you did to him. And in your brokenness, contrition, the fear of the Lord, you're going to call on the name of the Lord. Okay? It all works together. And may he save you. Okay? He's in you. He abides in you. You're sealed if you're saved, born again, converted. Who's the one who has to do the abiding? Remember, he's not forcing you to do that. Let's continue. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except that it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Nothing of lasting. <laughs> we're going to get on. We're going to touch that here in a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye, my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, 
that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. If ye do whatsoever I command you. This was pre-crucifixion, but he was going to be crucified. Okay? To abide in Christ. And our example today for the, how to do that is found in Paul the Apostle. So, nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. Abideth not in who? He is like the beasts that perish. You're known of men, but yet you're not saved of the church of the living God, not abiding in Christ. What are you like? The beasts that perish. You're saved, born again of the church of the living God. Man that is in honor and understandeth not. It's like the beasts that perish. Job, we have, we have to see it. Job 28, 28. Job 28, 28. You have to see this. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil, this understanding. So man who is in honor, man that is in honor, and understandeth not, departeth from evil. It's like what? It's like the beasts that perish. Brother, Daniel chapter 4. <laughs> I told y'all <laughs> that this thing that my, my, my brother shared with me that the Lord gave him had branched out. <laughs> okay? Daniel chapter 4, okay? Let's look at this. Daniel chapter 4, 29 on to verse 37. Daniel chapter 4. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar, I truly believe without a doubt, is in heaven right now. I really do. Why is that? First of all, Daniel chapter 4, okay? Daniel chapter 4. First, let's look at... 13, verses 13 on to verse 16, okay? He had a dream, another dream. He calls in Daniel. Daniel gives him the interpretation. Check this out. Daniel chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. Let seven times pass over him. Now, if any of you had any dealings with tree roots, they, they, they get down, they, they abide. Sometimes you got to get actual dynamite and blow them up. So, or sometimes you got to get under the roots, put chains on them, uh, hook them chains up to what is called a backhoe, a big bulldozer, and try to... Th I've seen bulldozers kind of skid on the ground trying to pull up a tree, a tree root that got sliced down by a chainsaw. Roots, tree roots, big ones especially, that have deep-rooted roots, <laughs> they abide, don't they? Nevertheless, verse 12 in Psalm 49, Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. Hmm. 
And here we see in this example, verse 15 in uh, Daniel chapter 4, Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth. Tree stump. Stump of his roots. Hew down the tree, verse 14. Okay? Tree roots abide. Isn't that interesting, huh? And look at verses 23. Now go to verse 23. Daniel, giving the interpretation. On to verse 27. This, uh, beginning at verse 24. This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king. They shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar was allowed, given. The Lord called him his servant. He was given a whole lot of stuff. But see, there was something about King Nebuchadnezzar. He had a little pride. He wasn't abiding, was he? Even though the prophecy is about his roots. Let's continue. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou have known. That after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Now check this out. Verse 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, repent, and thine iniquities by shewing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom, for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Oh, now, I've touched on this in the previous video, but see how all these three tie together? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king, Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not, is, he is like the beasts that perish. Verse 12 in Psalm 49. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Who's in control? The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. So he was like one of the beasts that perish. Oh, nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. Abideth. Verse 34, And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever. Okay, King Nebuchadnezzar was warned that he should repent. He didn't. He got cocky. The Lord busted him down. 
And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 20 in Psalm 49. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. Could you say that King Nebuchadnezzar here came to the Lord via repentance and brokenness and his life changed because of it? No, 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 right? Yeah, <laughs> look at it. King Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 35, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the, habit, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? Cocky King Nebuchadnezzar, broken. Uh, I see contrition there. In verse 34, fear. This is the Old Testament. Pretty good example for our instruction in righteousness, isn't it? At the same time, my reason returned to me. His reason, his understanding returned to me, onto me in verse 34. What is understanding? To depart from evil, as he was, uh, to depart from evil, which he was warned to do in verse 27. See? Verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. Thank your pardon, brethren. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase Matthew chapter 7 we're almost done Matthew chapter 7 Verses 21 on the verse 22, or 27. Matthew chapter 7. Verses 21 on the verse 27. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Is the actual, physical, literal kingdom that is in Jerusalem where our Lord Jesus Christ will be ruling and reigning for a thousand years, okay? But the instruction for us. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, my, doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Profess a lot of things, don't you? Love the world. Looking towards the world? Where's your, where's your treasure at? Do we realize, brethren, that probably a lot sooner than any of us would like to imagine, we're going to be put in, some of us are going to be put into that situation? Are we ready for it? Therefore, oh, this is so beautiful. 
Remember, okay, man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. And also in verse 12, nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beast that perish. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, one who fears the Lord, which built his house upon a rock himself. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus, the rock of which the church of the living God is built on. Not Peter, you wicked Catholics. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, one who is living as if there is no God, which built his house upon the, upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Why was that? It was built upon the sand. Oh, they probably had a stock in the world. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Eighteen under verse twenty. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, that Antichrist, shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Remember, Antichrist is descriptive. Not title. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. What is that unction? What is that unction from the Holy One? Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> Verses 13 under verse 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Sealed with that Holy Spirit of of promise sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise that's the earnest from the Holy One himself seal whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption you're saved born again you're sealed verse uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. So, when times start getting rough, and they're going to, don't for one second think, please don't fall for any of this Jesuit, Stuff that is being uh, pushed on you. It's 
it's going to get to the point where the rubber is going to meet the road. And you're going to have to make your stand. Are we ready for this, brethren? I hope we are. I hope we are. That we could be as Job. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> what, shall we receive evil? Uh, shall we receive only good at the hands of God and not evil? And having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. My God will provide all your need and his riches in Christ Jesus. Wants are many, needs are few. And brother, sister, if you don't believe, if you don't believe the scriptures, okay, that God will provide for your needs. What, what are you trusting in? So, that is going to be it for this video. Um, that reference into Daniel... Um, my brother, my dear friend, uh, brought up to me about that. It's like, oh, wow, thanks a lot. Praise the Lord. And again, a brother um, sent a morsel, and these three videos is what that produced. So, and this will be the last one. Um, like I said, um, praise the Lord. Um, just just open this way open. And the uh, these past three videos... That have been done, all linked together. And it's all off of what the Lord gave a brother, which he shared to me. You see, we all work together in these things. You see my ugly face, yes, but it's not a one-man show. It's not a one-man show. And my wife and I, we can testify to the facts that the Lord will provide for your needs. And like I've, I've said often, if it wasn't for our Lord through the church of the living God, providing for what we need, who knows where, where, would, we, where would we be? We don't know, but praise the Lord. And may all of you who have be recompensed a thousandfold. Consider these things, brethren. Meditate upon these things. And um, may the Lord guide you and lead you. That's going to be it. It's going to take its, um, what time is it? It is 1.46 p.m. my time. I'm going to upload this, and this will take at least two hours to get this uploaded. So pray for one another. Don't forget to pray for one another. We love you, and we're praying for so very many of you. might not speak with you that much. Don't you forever, don't you forget for one moment that we pray for you, okay? Thank you so much for watching if you do.